We're ready? All right. So uh, thank you for coming. My name is Rick Lopez. I'm the director of quality engineering at Rackspace. Uh, I was going to be presenting with Rainia Mosher, one of the development engineers in the compute team. She's running a little bit late, so I have Brian Lamar, one of the engineer, uh, engineers in our team. He'll jump in there and help out whenever I get stuck. So why are we here? So we're going to be talking about deploying from trunk. It's a strategy that we selected to do in, in OpenStack, uh, in Rackspace. Uh, and you know, the, the whole reason is because we want to be able to you know, deploy from trunk on demand on a multi-cell environment with uh, a reasonable uh, amount of uh, downtime for, for our customers, and preferably no downtime. And reasonable is, is a little bit of a change, changing number because we're, you know, we're still working on trying to improve that process, but uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, this is our branching uh, scheme right now. So on a daily basis, we're uh, doing a, a merge from the OpenStack trunk to our uh, Rackspace development branch. In that process, we deal with any merge conflicts that, that we encounter. Uh, once we're ready for a deployment, we cut a branch uh, with a, a major release version. We do that so that we can uh, do any uh, bug fixes or any patches uh, necessary without uh, stopping the, the daily merge into, you know, into our development branch. Any changes that we, ne we need to do, we apply them to the, uh, you know, to the release branch. We tag that so that we can do our new build and deploy it. And once that's in place, we go ahead and roll those back into our development branch. And then we submit those as patches up uh, to OpenStack. Um, in the most recent release, which I think is uh, February 28th, uh, we, we internally call it 152, uh, we had over uh, 50 minor uh, patches that we had to apply to it. That's, you know, and that's because of all the continuous integration and, and all the uh, issues that we encounter while we're testing. Uh, we had to apply that many in order to be able to deploy. And that actually uh, is applying about 40 patches that we had to apply to, to that branch once we bring it down for any Rackspace specific changes that we have. Um, that is you know, anything from the way we authorize to our billing and a whole bunch of other things. Now, I'll let you talk a little bit about this one because you're a little bit more uh, familiar, but this is uh, kind of the strategy that we use for our packaging. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we broke our kind of packaging distribution strategy into three steps. Um, the first one is we, we used to use um, Debian packages for everything, so we had this giant process where we had a Jenkins server and all of our code from the slide before on the custom branches um, went through the, the Jenkins server and created these Debian packages. Um, and one of the things, we had, we had a lot of problems with that. And one, it wasn't very portable if we ever wanted to move to a different um, operating system. Right now we're on Debian squeeze, um, but we, we ended up working with uh, um, virtual environments and basically we just run Python virtual environments, we make a virtual environment for each, um, each project, like Nova, um, Quantum, and we tar it up, and that is basically our deploy package. Um, it's fairly flexible, it works on a lot of different, with a little bit of tweaks, it works on a lot of different um, operating systems. Um, we haven't quite tested the portability, but that's kind of, the reason we did that was mostly for portability. So um, we package everything up in these tar balls that has all the Python code and um, then we just, uh, we actually use BitTorrent um, to distribute it. So we have, um, you know, thousands of nodes that we're, get, we're, we're using BitTorrent to um, seed and distribute all of this code between them. Uh, so that's kind of where the distributing comes in. And the, the tool we use to distribute it is, all, is BitTorrent as well as mCollective um, to actually kick off the download of the torrent and the seeding of the torrent. So mCollective is, um, 
uh, by Puppet Labs, I believe, and uh, it's basically, we, we had some troubles with parallel SSH and it takes a long time to parallel SSH to thousands of nodes. Um, so uh, M Collective, uh, it was kind of the their answer to that um, so far. So um, after everything's distributed, um, we do a couple of verification steps, but then the main thing is to, to really um, execute that code that, and, and deploy the code that we've just you know, distributed out there. So we have a, a symlink kind of process, which is pretty simple. Um, in, um, on all of our servers, we have um, a directory with all of these different versions that are downloaded. So there might be, as Rick said, 50 different minor revisions that we're testing out. So we have 50 different versions downloaded, and we just have a, a symlink or a pointer pointed to the one that should be active on that, on that node. Um, the entire deploy process is put everything out there, change the symlink to the right version, and then run Puppet. Um, and then Puppet kind of just handles everything from there. Um, as well as I, syncing the database, I guess, another step, but um, that's kind of the, the entire, really uh, um, getting everything out there and then running Puppet is, is the main deploy process. Cool. The, uh, this is our development and deploying pipeline. Uh, so from, from this slide, uh, steps two and three, uh, the uh, distribute and execute pretty much happens in every one of those environments. Uh, and I outline is essentially what we, what we do with each one of those. So development, obviously, that's where the, our developers do their work. Integration is our continuous integration environment in which we run smoke tests and unit tests. Uh, if everything works well in there, we promote that to the QA environment where we do functional and integration tests. And that's mostly between the components and between internal products that we have in Rackspace. Uh, if everything from that point on is ready to, to roll, we deploy to our uh, pre-production environment. And in there, we just mostly focus on regression. We just want to make sure that before we say that we're ready for production, we run through our entire suite of tests. And if everything's ready to go, we tag it for release. Yes? How long does it? So it depends on how many patches we need to apply uh, based on the bug fixes that we find. And really, the only limitation to the system is how fast you can deploy it and how fast will the tests run. Right? So from, from environment to environment, you, if you can deploy it fast and test it, we can probably be from uh, our integration environment all the way to production within a few hours. You know, it doesn't always go that smoothly because, again, you go round and round. Um, and, and I'll talk about a, a, few, a few things that we're looking ahead and hopefully be able to accomplish to shorten that. So why we do it? You know, I think uh, this, is, this is really the gist of the, the whole uh, conversation here. Uh, Issue resolution. So one of the, the things that we want to be able to do is find issues faster, make the community aware of them so that we can take a decision on them, and shorten the feedback loop. Right? We, we want to be able to, before we, ideally before we pull it down into, uh, into our internal branch, we would like to be able to catch those uh, uh, issues upstream so that we don't have to you know, spend the time patching the branch. Uh, internally, and then submitting and submitted them up, uh, and with that, you know, it gives us ability to you know solve those issues faster. Right now, we we're fixing those issues internally, and if, if you remember on this slide, we actually have to submit those patches all the way up to to trunk, so that takes a little bit of time, you know. So it makes that that feedback loop really long. The deployment takes a lot of time. Um, and obviously, if anyone, which I'm sure a lot of you are, are doing continuous integration, one of the things is to be able to uh, do smaller incremental releases. Want to be able, to, instead of having to wait until uh, you know Grizzly or Havana are you know completed and then deploy that and find all the issues at that point, we want to be able to do that a lot faster with smaller releases so that we can provide that feedback a, a lot sooner. Uh, and that ultimately uh, doesn't, all, not, doesn't only benefit us internally, but it also benefits the overall, the overall release cycle because 
we've found a lot of the issues up front. So if we can bring those up to trunk, when the release is completed, a lot of those issues would have been resolved already. So that's really you know, one of the biggest benefits that we see. Um, but it is very hard. We've, you know, as Brian uh, commented earlier, it, you know, we go through, you know, several patches, you know, to our branches. It takes a lot of time. Uh, and, and a lot of it has to do with the merge conflicts. Um, that, that's one of the, the issues that, that we have because we have to go through that big uh, loop. You know, someone has to spend a lot of time solving through those merge conflicts. Uh, not ideal. And those, and those merge conflicts are really um, a product of our own patches, as you said. I mean, the slide before that said, you know, we have about like 50 um, internal patches that we are working actively to get submitted um, because we're trying not to have them. And the fewer custom patches that we have, um, you know, the, the less merge conflicts, the fewer merge conflicts we're going to have. Absolutely. Um, we have disruptive, yes. Um, yeah, 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 we do. Hi. So this is Rainier. Yeah. To find food. Um, so I'm Rainia Mosier, and um, Rackspace Dev Manager for Deploy Infrastructure. And of our 40 or 50 patches, there are a few that don't go upstream because we have them so that they work with our billing system, so that they work with our internal auth right now that we're using. Um, and as OpenStack continues to mature, as the various projects continue to improve, then and we are at a spot where we can move off of those internal systems, I, then that, that is our intent. But right now, we do have some that you guys just don't really want. Um, so the other one is that you know, we have disruptive DB migrations. That's one of the uh, biggest issues that I think we, we encountered the last time we did, we did a, a merge internally. Um, and the service restarts. Obviously, you know, you know, we, we're striding for no downtime uh, for our customers, so having to restart a service is not ideal for, for us. Um, from the testing perspective, which is what, what I'm the most familiar with, uh, one of the challenges that we have is right now in OpenStack, we rely a lot on DevStack. Well, DevStack, you know, it's great. It gives you, you know, a lot of value, but from my perspective, I need to be able to uh, test a full scalable deployment. And we don't have that ability right now. We're working on it. I know, you know there's a lot of initiatives around that, but that's one of the biggest challenges right now. There's a lot of uh, issues that don't manifest themselves until you actually do a scale deployment. The question is, what do you do about database migration conflicts? If you make a mistake and you know, you take backups or things like that, or yeah, I mean, we have, we have many, many backups um, very, very frequently. Um, the majority of migrations, we, have, we don't modify the community migrations. Um, every once in a while, we will submit patches to those migrations because they are inefficient for a database of our size. Um, but we, all, we always try to put that um, up into the, the community and, and fix previous migrations. For, for example, there was one that uh, recently, for instance, system metadata that wanted to insert 10, in, 10 rows into instance system metadata for every single instance you've ever had, um, and even including deleted ones. So we were going to insert millions and millions of rows in, for this migration. So um, it's just one of those things that uh, we, we work with, uh, with the community. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. we do everything inside the community. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. We we heard that in the last keynote, uh, the uh, in Grizzly keynote that you know, uh, you can move the trunk to production um, within short span of time. So and you also mentioned that the scale testing is an issue for you. Mm -hmm. So how confident are you to move to production without such a scale testing? I'm not. So that's what. But we do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come, uh. <laughs> come tomorrow at 4:30. This room again. Yes. And we'll talk about how we're learning to scale OpenStack, and we'll really dive into some more of these. Um, and this is this is this is how we're doing it. Kind of the methodology, the 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 process that we use. Tomorrow is, what have we learned in the last year? 
And it's interesting. It's a good story, yeah. I think. Um, so touching a little bit on the, on the rework, this uh, again has to do uh, with the fact that we don't have uh, a lot of our tests upstream, plus we don't have the ability to do that full scale uh, deployment. So we're finding a lot of the issues once it hits our environment. By the time it hits it, our, our environment, we've probably gone through several days or several weeks worth of testing uh, in, in some cases. And anything that we find, it, you know, it, it creates a, the situation in which now development has to go fix it. We have to you know, patch our release branch, roll all, that all the way up to OpenStack. So it, it creates you know, a, a lot of delays in, in the process. And that's something that we're working to resolve, but it's one of the, the issues that we encounter. Um, do you upgrade your whole infrastructure at once, or do you just do a small subset, see how it goes? So how, you know, how, long, how long does it take to spread through your whole environment? Maria? Well, that depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, it took us probably about three weeks to get our latest release off of Grizzly out to production. And to be honest, it's still not in all of our data centers because of some of the issues that we encountered with performance, with the database migrations. Um, and, we, and we worked, and, and I know that a lot of the things we, we tend to say, Rackers tend to say the community, we work with the community. And we do want to say that we are the community, and so it's like, our Nova people are working together with all of the Nova people from everywhere to, to make this better. And so that's tomorrow we'll actually show, be able, I'll actually be able to show numbers, information, like what was the impact, how do we fix it? So we're still, you know, we, we pulled code beginning of March and it's still not everywhere, right? Um, but we have been able to do all three of our data centers in less than an hour, including smoke and val including validation and build testing. And so, um, so you know, in the first slide, when we're talking about a reasonable amount of time, it, it really does depend right now. It's really very variable um, what we're going to be considering reasonable. Right now, an hour is amazing, <laughs> is amazing. It's not still true CI/CD. It's still not really continuous. Um, but when you've had to, to wait six hours for a deploy to roll through an entire, an entire region of you know, multiple cells with hundreds of hypervisors, an hour is pretty awesome. So, um, so yeah, so that's, and that's another one if you're able to come tomorrow. And then the, the presentation will have, I'll have more, more about that. Uh, lastly, we talked a little bit about the process and uh, I th this is where uh, I think we have the biggest differences. So in internally, we're trying to do continuous integration with the goal of doing a continuous deployment uh, strategy. Well, that is in direct conflict with how the OpenStack releases are actually being managed. We, we go for big milestones, right? So when a developer upstream is doing work, they're not necessarily thinking about someone consuming it down the road uh, within a few days. They're just working on their feature. They're, they're doing the development that, that they need to do, and, and that's it. So that's a, that difference you know, creates a little bit of problems for us, and, and that's where we find some of the scalability issues because we're, we're being impacted by them right away, um, among others. And the, the last one is the time that it takes to mer you know, merge all those patches. You know, it, it, it's an investment. It takes a lot of time. Uh, so we, we want to be able to like, solve that and, and ad address those uh, a lot faster. Uh, and that's where... You know, this is what, what we're trying to accomplish. You know, uh, from a code management perspective, is we want to minimize as many local patches as we can. We want to be able to do all the work upstream uh, and, and not have to deal with, with a, a lot of these issues that we have when we're doing merges. Uh, having non disrupted uh, DB migrations, you know, as uh, Brian was talking about, you know. We just need to figure out a way, and I know there's been some discussions already in the summit about, you know, how we achieve that. So that's encouraging. Uh, zero downtime is that's important for for us and our customers. We don't want to have to bring down the service on a regular basis uh, for our customers. Plus, I think uh, most of the team is getting tired of doing uh, super late releases uh, in the evening because we're trying yes. to minimize the impact. So we have to do it late at night. We want to be able to do it whenever we want to. 
so that we don't have to you know, worry about it. Uh, and the API versioning, uh, rolling upgrades, I know you have a little bit more yeah. insight into that. So before we move on into testing, I'm just curious, does everybody know what we mean by zero downtime service upgrades? Um, I've been here about a year. Anybody not kind of get what that is? So basically, and I'm just going to explain it and why it's important. So we do our deploys at 10 o'clock at night central time um, to minimize the number of active customers that are doing it. We don't want to do that. That sucks. I, I want to be at home sleeping and watching television at the same time. Um, <laughs> but whenever a service restarts, if a customer's in the middle of doing something on their, on their customer instance, on their customer hypervisor, on their customer VM, they're at risk of having it error out on them when that service restarts because the service doesn't know what it was doing once it comes back up. Um, and so that image resize is going to go to error. That, or that, that server resize is going to go to error. That image snapshot it has a chance of being errored out. Um, it's a bad experience for a customer trying to use the cloud. And um, it's a nightmare for our operations and our admin teams that have to go clean it up. There are ways to clean it up. There are ways to recover it. Somebody calls. They're really upset. They don't want to go through the trouble. They're trying to do a resize in the middle of it or migration. Um, there are ways to clean it, but it, it's manual and it's messy. So that's really where, when we talk about the, the zero downtime service upgrades, um, that, that's really what we mean and why it's so important. Um, and there have been some Nova conversations in the design, the design track really around that. For the API versioning, um, one of our metrics is just, you know, we, we monitor when the, where the API drops and different things. We, we monitor, does it go below this threshold, this threshold? We'd like it to be 100%. I mean, that's our goal. That's, that's our goal. Zero, 100% always there. When you upgrade the API node and you restart it, it drops. It's gone. Um, and it's a, it can lead to errors. It leads to you know just bad. It's a bad experience. That's really that's really what it's about. It's just a bad experience. So um, the API versioning is is a path ahead to help to help with that, so that we can roll through, upgrade, and not ever have it go down completely. Questions on that? All right. So moving on to testing. Uh, so this is where we can address some of the issues uh, that we face uh, around testing and finding bugs a little bit later down in the cycle. So we have a lot of initiatives internally um, where we want to move all our tests uh, upstream, uh, all our tests minus anything that's Rackspace specific, obviously, because that wouldn't benefit the community. But our goal is if we can move all those tests that we're using internally that are finding the issues down the road and have them upstream those issues will be found before we even pull that, that uh, code down into our system, right? Uh, that allows us to fix them uh, you know, much faster so we don't have to do any other local patches internally and then go through that longer you know, uh, feedback loop. And then in terms of process, uh, we, we're having a few initiatives of, of trying to put you know, those tests, you know, be part of the CI, CD, uh, uh, OpenStack pipeline so that we can provide feedback. So if uh, anyone does any check-in any, uh, into Trunk, any breaks you know, our implementation, we know that there's something wrong. We know that someone needs to go back and look at what was checked in, what was changed, and, you know, and address it before it gets our, down to our system or any other system, right? You know, because we're all using the same code base. And Lastly, the, the, the one thing that, you know, we had a, a couple of conversations internally uh, is for, for the community to get used to the idea that Trunk should always be deployable. At any point, if you pull down Trunk, you should be able to deploy it without having to do any changes. And that's not necessarily the case right now. And part of putting the test upstream, you know, should give us a little bit better uh, certainty of that, you know, Having it as part of the uh, CI, CD, uh, OpenStack pipeline will help with that as well. Uh, but there's, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other things that we can do to ensure that. Uh, that that's just a mindset that I think we all have to get into. Uh, these are uh, some sessions that actually go into a few more details on you know, some of the information that we cover here. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to Actually, today you're, you're, 
you're doing. Um, Next is the the gating validation of OpenStack deployments, which yes. is um, I believe Daryl Wallach from our QE team is doing um, after this over in over in on the B side. Yeah. Um, and then this afternoon, the 521 is another one of those kind of going beyond the API into the instances and, and confirming and, and just more of, the, more of the testing and how we actually yeah. test. Yeah, and this, this one is a, is a good one uh, because internally we actually test more than just making sure that the resource is available. So once you, you know, spin up a server, it's great to know that the server is there, but you know, we go beyond that. We validate that everything that you define, you know, in your request actually made it. So uh, it's going beyond just that, that immediate response. So, you know, if you're interested in that, please attend. Um, the session that, tomorrow is the session that Rainia was talking about earlier. And also the one at 240 is, I believe, Sam, are you doing that one? And that is actually yeah. our Cloud Cafe tool, which is being, is open sourced is open source and completely available and is how we're currently um, performing our tests internally and is what we would like to have opened up for consideration by the community. So tomorrow at 2.40 is a deep dive into that, along with the learning to scale OpenStack and, and our story kind of of the last year. And the last one is Roberts? Yeah, and then the last one on Thursday, 9 o'clock in the morning, hopefully Wednesday isn't too much fun, um, is, <laughs> is um, Robert Collins from HP. Um, who works closely on the Nova Bare Metal project, um, is actually going to be presenting on continuous deployment for upstream no, no OpenStack and really starting to address and talk to um, the topic of how to keep Trunk continuously deployable so that anybody could just pull it down and it would work at any time. Um, so, so that will be an interesting conversation. <laughs> so that is uh, most of the material that we wanted to cover. Uh, Questions? Yes. Here, one sec. Any thoughts on open sourcing parts of this? Parts of? Uh, all of it. Yeah, all of it? We are. Uh, so we definitely are doing that on, from the testing side. So uh, again, tomorrow there's, there's a conversation about the, the testing framework that we decided to use internally. Uh, we are making it available to the community for review, for feedback. We want to see uh, where can it be improved, how can we make use of it. But that's available right now in StackForge. You can look for uh, Open Cafe, Cloud Cafe, or Open Roast. There are three components of the, you know, the big testing framework that we use. And I heard an interesting tidbit from our images team that works on Glance. Um, they're working on the scheduled images code and blueprints right now. Um, and are in the testing phase and integration testing, and they were running um, their smoke tests, their smoke suite for, at 30 minutes, and they turned on parallelization in Cloud Cafe, and it went down to six minutes. <laughs> I heard that today, and it was like, I'm like, oh my goodness, that's that's amazing, and that's yes. without even really trying well, hard. One other thing, real quick, um, is there there is the the third kind of um, piece uh, beyond that, other than the testing, the deployment, actual deployment code that we're using to deploy things. Um, is being planned on open sourcing that as well. So um, it's just one of the things that, or actually, we really love to work with Robert Collins and them to figure out how to do our deployments the exact same way as um, the OpenStack infrastructure team and the Jenkins um, project, so that we're all kind of deploying using the same tools um, as long as they scale correctly. Yes. Um, the scale has been the biggest uh, limiter to, to a lot of tools in deployment. So I don't know whether you can share it, but. As from the network topology, do you guys use VLANs or tunnel? Um, yeah, we. I mean, our data center has all sorts of VLANs. I really couldn't tell you how and when we use them. Um, uh, pardon? Oh, Chad. Yeah, you, you talk. So here, let, me, let me go let Chad. If you'd Chad like to is, talk, talk to Chad. Yeah, Chad is one of our, our network um, gurus back here in the corner. Um, <laughs> Thank you for speaking up. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a mix of both. We actually do hybrid. So we do bridge tunnel or bridge network for basically the north-south traffic coming out of the VM, so to your public connection. And then we do offer overlay networks for within the data center. And then also we are our overarching 
architecture is the iNova, Nova OpenStack in OpenStack, where we use an OpenStack cloud to deploy our control plane and then manage our customer capacity, which exists on cells. Um, and it's kind of trippy, taking a year for me to understand it. Um, but it, it, it allows us to build four VMs or, or four hypervisors as a seed node. We do that manually once, and then we can kick off everything that we need with scripts and automated it. And we're actually looking at the Nova Bare Metal project and heat um, as it matures, as it improves, to be able to even automate that initial, those initial seed nodes so that we don't even have to touch those. Um, so this is why we're very excited to see what's coming. Um, we have to continue working on this because we have a production cloud, um, but we are be being part of this and, and aligning with that. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you for coming. If you, if you have any other questions, you know you can grab us on the side.